what do you think um, is the best way to address this multi-layered issue of safety, not just in, you know, cities like Chicago, but in urban communities all around the country and rural that are experiencing, you know, these mass shootings? Well, you know what they say, Danielle, um, all politics is local, right? And so I truly believe that the uh, uh, answer or the solution to gun violence and, public, and increasing public safety in our communities all across the city will be done at the local level. I think that the federal government has a role to play here um, in terms of uh, providing uh, assistance to cities, uh, to get things under control uh, and to have people feel safer in, the, in their neighborhoods. Um, you know, there's always this talk about uh, sensible gun legislation. Well, what does that really mean? Um, and, you know, given that there's some um, lack of uh, consensus among Democrats and Republicans in the Congress, um, there are some... Uh, points that I believe that we can come to agreement on where, where it's a win-win situation for everyone, given that the majority of the country are in favor of some kind of sensible gun legislation. So I think at the federal level, we should be uh, supporting um, universal and comprehensive background checks. Um, we should also be uh, uh, moving to ban the use of assault white weapons within um, the country. Um, we should uh, have uh, universal inventories of red flags. They call it red flag laws to make sure that we can identify people that are potentially problematic. And I think if we had this kind, and, and also increasing penalties and fines for people that uh, move guns or traffic guns across state lines, uh, if we had more laws that were consistent across the whole nation uh, that help people to um, know that what goes on in uh, Wisconsin uh, is the same that happens in Illinois, is the same that happens in Indiana, um, I think we could uh, address the influx of guns that we're seeing across our city. I mean, it's crazy that the police department would... Um, secure 250 illegal guns, you know, over a Memorial Day weekend. So that tells you that the flow of guns into the uh, state of Illinois, into the city of Chicago is, is high. Yeah. But um, this issue of public safety is not just about uh, instituting uh, gun laws, right? We have to uh, look for ways to invest in our children, uh, to invest in our youth, um, that means everything from, you know, securing dollars at the federal level to put back um, music programs and cultural programs in our schools, things that, you know, programs that people are attracted to that help them uh, want to learn uh, the, the reading, writing, and arithmetic, as they call it. Um, we need to support uh, sports programs and uh, uh, shop classes and home economics classes as we did in the uh, olden days, so to speak. Um, so uh, um, it, it's also about making those kind of investments at the federal level. Um, I think we need to create more job opportunities uh, for our um, adults, um, especially on the south sides of the city, the southern suburbs, where we see growing um, economic growth. Uh, we need to be able to connect people who live in the city of Chicago uh, to that economic growth, whether it's through the extension of the 95th Street L station, making sure that it goes exactly to where it needs to go to those job centers, or if it's about adding a third airport, uh, which can help uh, all of the cargo uh, business that has uh, grown up in the south suburbs. So this is a multi-pronged, um, uh, all hands on deck approach uh, to end uh, gun violence in our city. It's not just about uh, law and order, it's about uh, major investments in our communities. And as we talk about those, you talk about these kind of underlying root causes, economic, classism, things like that. Can you speak to, 
your your ideas, what you would like to do as Congresswoman when it comes to addressing some of those underlying calls. You talked a little bit about the economics, but as we talk about mental health services or quality health care, um, what are some of the other things that you'd like to do as Congresswoman that you think would kind of help um, when it comes to addressing this crisis? Well, um, at the very basic bottom level, uh, it is all about people being civically engaged in their government. Um, as an alderman, I have found when um, people hold me accountable uh, for uh, providing resources for the decisions that I make uh, within the wards that I represent, the ward that I represent, which includes Bronzeville, the South Loop, Washington Park, and Fuller Park. Um, that's best. So one of the things that I would want to do early on is to educate uh, the constituents within the district about what the role of a congressman is. What are some of the um, uh, uh, services that a congressman's office could provide to begin to have in-depth conversations with people about the very issues that you raised that they're concerned about, health care, mental health care, education, public safety, affordable housing. Those are um, key. And I think from those discussions, it will help to direct the functions within our office. I know that uh, my focus is gonna be on bringing back resources to get in the fight on gun safety, voting rights, reproductive rights. But at the end of the day, um, there may be something as simple as, um, and just as an example, uh, working with the Department of Housing and Urban Development to address a policy change or an issue or some kind of program requirement or thrust that uh, would bring increased opportunities or increased funding for affordable, for affordable housing within the first congressional district. And that's about doing the work. You know, it's one thing to talk the talk and uh, it's another thing to get in there, roll up your sleeves, go meet with those department heads, um, read those manuals and understand uh, what's required to bring back resources for the constituents. You know, this is a, a different kind of Congress. I, I say it's not the Congress that I grew up with or my parents. It's a more divisive Congress, and it's a Congress now that, uh, quite frankly, has open uh, racists and, and white supremacists in it. And as we talk about reaching across the aisle and trying to get things done, how do you mm -hmm. do that with a Congress that is so polarizing at the moment? Well, I think you choose your battles wisely and you uh, take, as they, that, what's that saying? Take one bite of the elephant at, at a time. Um, you know, I'm one person working within a delegation from the state of Illinois. Um, the way I like to work is to one, um, be very vocal about what the issues are when I'm involved in a certain um, uh, uh, priority area, for example, uh, you know, as the chair of the budget committee, um, I have, I'm deeply in that space. So I know the finances of the city. I know the numbers. I know what the departments do. I also have an understanding of what my colleagues um, uh, desire. And, you know, people think that the city council, for example, is monolithic, but it's not. We have uh, Republicans in, this, in the city council, along with democratic socialists, progressive, what I call old school Democrats. Um, uh, and it's a matter of trying to find a win-win uh, uh, lane, a lane where everyone can get something. They may not get everything that they want, but um, there's a win-win for everyone that has a great impact on all neighborhoods in the city of Chicago. I wanna take that kind of focus to Congress. And I think that you're seeing that a little bit with the discussion around um, uh, gun violence yesterday and what happened in Buffalo are now forcing people because the community, the people in the country are holding their representatives accountable. And so there are discussions going on now between Republicans and um, Democrats to find what lane, what 
consensus that they can come to on legislation around gun safety that would be supported by both sides of both sides of the aisle. And so I think it's a matter of um, the importance of getting to know uh, who you're working with in Congress, being authentic about the things that you care about, and then uh, doing the work and having those discussions necessary to uh, find solutions that benefit all. Now, do you think it's possible to have those kinds of resolutions, especially as we we talk about the stripping away of uh, American civil rights right now um, in these bits and pieces, whether it's critical race theory and that attack, whether it's the attack on women's reproductive rights or LGBTQ rights or immigration rights, those are more uh, divisive topics um, that are happening in Congress. Do you think you would be able to, to come up with some um, resolution when you're up against so many people that are very much stuck in that line of thinking that it's this way or no way? You know, uh, Danielle, it's tough, um, no doubt about it. But when you look at the fact that over 69% of the country is in favor of reproductive justice for women, um, that ought to tell the people in Congress uh, something about uh, what their constituents want, right? So um, I'm going to be in the fight having those discussions, um, lifting up my voice, joining in with others, for example, in the Congressional Black, Black Caucus or the Women's Caucus uh, to raise those important issues that people care about. Um, but at the end of the day, the bottom line is people have to get out and vote. If they want to see a change, they have to make the change that they want to see. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important for a congresswoman to uh, be right in the mix with her constituents. That's something that I pride myself on with, uh, you know, now as an alderman, being able to you know, go to community meetings, um, stop and talk to groups of people in, in Mariano's or Jewel's or whatever, wherever. Um, those are the, the ways that you bring people uh, communicating uh, through newsletters and emails and on a consistent basis to keep people engaged, but people have to be engaged. Mm -hmm. And as we talk about, you know, engagement, uh, especially with voters, you know, sometimes we, we hear this, you know, they come around, politicians come around during election season to secure our vote. We come out, we vote for them. And when they go to Washington, they get influenced or um, romanticized by corporate interests and things like that. And then the things that they voted for, for this candidate, they start to change because they've been influenced by, by the money. Can you speak to what kind of congresswoman you would be representing the first first district? I would be the same kind of congresswoman with a, a, a more extensive and broader focus that than I have been as that's that, that I have been as an alderman. I'm an alderman who has been I've been elect, reelected three times in in my own ward um, uh, with um, support from a very diverse ward. Uh, my ward is 68% uh, African-American and the remainder other races. Um, and the importance of uh, being connected to your constituents, having them see you, I think it is important. I mean, one of the things that I found knocking on doors in uh, different places going through this race, people, one, have never seen their congressman at their door. Two, have never seen a congressman. Uh, three, haven't received a phone call from their congressman. And so I don't want to be that kind of uh, elected official. I haven't been. Um, I'm someone that's deeply rooted in my community. Um, and I get my directives from my constituents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I want to kind of go back just a little bit. You, you know, you initially, like you said, you've been all the women of this world for quite some time, very respected in, in your ward. What made you say it was the time for you to run for Congress? What inspired you to run? I was inspired by, you know, just loving the work that I do um, and being successful at it, you know, having increased affordable housing, which is one of the key issues in, um, uh, you know, that you mentioned earlier, Danielle. 
um, you know, working on um, dozens of opening up, helping to open up dozens of uh, African-American businesses throughout the ward. Um, I've done a lot of work building schools, um, getting rid of a food desert by bringing in two grocery stores, um, creating a, a open space in new parks for, for people, um, making sure the city services are delivered in a more efficient manner. Um, so I get less complaints uh, about things like garbage collection and tree trimming. Um, uh, I was inspired to run because I believe that I have um, demonstrated that I can deliver results for real people. And I wanted to do that at a bigger level. I mean, who knew that Congressman Bobby Rush would decide to retire? Um, it wasn't something I was thinking about, but when it happened, I thought about my skill set, the district, and how bringing those two things together, we could do some good things to move the needle forward on many of the communities in the district. Mm -hmm. And do you think, I know we've had this, we, it's been brought up at some of the forums, this, this idea of how much experience, political experience you need to actually go to Congress or not um, to do the job. Do you think your experience in politics in Chicago is a help as you uh, go into Congress? Yeah, I was speaking to a um, congressman yesterday at a reception for the Congressional Black Caucus who, were, who was in Chicago, uh, who are in Chicago now to uh, uh, have some meetings. And he was a former uh, city council person in his city, uh, former state legislator, former senator. And uh, he was telling me that he thought that the most important um, um, experience he had was being a legislator because that was something that would be necessary um, going into uh, the, the Congress. Um, I think that's an important piece to be able to write legislation. I've done that to be able to read through res legislation and understand it uh, and know how to ask the questions of the Corporation Council of the departments is, is something you need to be able to do. Um, and not just that, but also um, being able to talk to department heads and understand the bureaucracy and what's in the bowels of those bureaucracies that could benefit the first congressional district and then working uh, with my staff to bring that out. So I've directed a staff, I've done legislation, um, I'm chair of the budget committee, so I understand budgeting and, and how to read a budget, um, how to impact a budget. Uh, and I think those are all important skills that you take to Washington, because I don't believe that this is a job for someone uh, that needs to learn, have, you know, learn on the job. I think it's important that someone be ready on day one uh, to handle the requirements of that office. And I'm the best prepared in the race to do that. Um, what do you want Chicago Defender readers to know? Why are you the best pick for the first district? Danielle, I, you know, I, I am a true public servant. You know, I'm not in this because um, I've got a famous last name or I'm running on anybody's coattails. I'm not trying to strong arm the election. I'm just a, a former little girl whose mother and father instilled in her the importance, the important value of serving people. And that's what I've been doing all my life. I'm not running... Uh, in this office to uh, for power or for money. I'm doing it because I like to see improvements in the places that I serve and to know as I drive by different places that I have something to do with that, working with the people in the community. Um, I think people need to know that um, um, I am, I have a lot of integrity. Um, I'm uh, a Christian a woman and I, uh, someone that likes to have a little fun on, on the side, you know, when I can find time for it. But my focus is really to bring back the bacon for the residents of the first congressional district and to have uh, my constituents know their congressman and know what a congressman does. Mm -hmm. And I want to be the first woman to first woman congressman of the congresswoman of the first congressional district. 
I thank you for this opportunity to address the, the, the voters and the readers of the Chicago Defender. Thank you.